Even if you're completely new to polymer clay, with the techniques I'm going to show you, you will be able to complete this project, or this project, or both, successfully on your very first try. And who knows, even you experienced clayers may learn a thing or two. Hey there, Sandy here with another polymer clay tutorial at KeepsakeCrafts.net. We are going to start this project by making the walls of the tea light, which are going to be made out of translucent clay. Translucent clay, you say? Yeah, when I was first new to clay, learning that it came in translucent blew my mind. If you want to learn more about the different brands of translucent clay, I will point you to an article by Ginger at the Blue Bottle Tree. And if you're new to polymer clay and you're not aware of Ginger Davis Almond and her wonderful site with all the information you could ever want on polymer clay, do be sure to check out the Blue Bottle Tree. Now my two favorite brands of translucent clay are Cernit and Pardo. You will notice that they both look white in the package, but after baking, they have a translucency. You can kind of see the light shining through on the back side of this tea light. These can be harder to find, so if you can only find Sculpey Primo, if you want to use a blue color like I'm doing here, be sure that you get the white translucent. This is just plain old translucent, and it has kind of a weird yellow tint, so your blues will end up looking more green. If you're doing something orange or yellow, then you can use the plain translucent. But if you want blue, go for white translucent. This project isn't going to be super see-through as the thicker the clay, the less light shines through it, but it has a real pretty glow when there's a light on the inside. I'm using four colors in this one, all shades of blue and green, and I used about a half ounce of translucent clay for each color, and all you need is a tiny dab of a different colored clay to tint it. Just mix it in. And Now because this looks white, after baking, your colors will be darker than they appear right now. They won't be quite as pastel. And if you want your color to be a little streaky, feel free to not mix that in thoroughly. So here's my color, just partially mixed in. It'll be fine. Now you are simply going to roll logs of your clay that are long enough to go around your tea light. And these don't have to be perfectly even logs. One easy way to start is to just cut some strips and then roll them in your hands. Roll them on your work surface. You can see these are kind of lumpy bumpy and it just adds to the effect. In this case, I am using an eight inch long texture sheet from Create Along, but if you don't have one this long, you can use a shorter texture sheet and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Because I have a nice long texture sheet, I simply use that to determine what size circle cutter I could use for my form. By the way, this set of circle cutters is really handy to use. You can use it for all sorts of things. I frequently use these for forms, for bowls and boxes and such. Now this blank area on the texture makes it look like this circle cutter might be a little too big, but remember that polymer clays can stretch a bit, so I should be able to stretch it to fill that gap. To get a candle holder in any size you want, simply choose a circle cutter in that size. Then use a tape measure to determine its circumference. Make a sheet of clay that is that long and as tall as you want. And by the way, make sure you are using a metal cutter or one you are certain can be baked at 275 Fahrenheit. Once all of your translucent clay is mixed and you have your logs rolled out, lay out all of your logs of clay in a wavy pattern on a tile until they fill the entire area you need for your tea light. In this case, I am using this texture sheet as my template. This is basically determining the size of my candle holder. Once all of your logs of translucent clay are laid out in a pleasing pattern, spritz just a tiny bit of Armor All over as a release. You don't need much. That is more than enough. Just the thinnest layer will act as a release. Some folks like to use water as a release, but I find it annoying to have to blot the water up off my polymer. 
This works best if you're using a sheet of clay because you can spritz the whole thing, wipe off everything but the thinnest layer, and then put on your texture sheet. If you tried to put it on the texture sheet, you wouldn't be able to get down into the crevices. Now you can press your texture sheet into the clay. But I wanted to show you that if you're using a, a shorter sheet, it's fine. Because we're adding tentacles all around this, any seams or overlapping areas with the texture sheet can be hidden by a tentacle. So don't worry about that. You would just do one section of your texture, and then when that was done, you'd overlap slightly and do the other one. But in this case, I'm going to do this whole long one at once. Use gentle pressure to get it embedded all along its entire area because you don't want it slipping or moving and then you end up with a double image. Next, add some paper. I love these sheets of deli paper and burnish well. I've also seen other clayers use one of these stainless steel soaps for burnishing, but you'll really be able to feel when it's pretty smooth and evenly embedded in the clay. Once all of your translucent clay is textured, let's remove the texture sheet. Isn't that cool? Now you can trim the edges neatly with a clay blade. And don't toss these scraps. We'll be using these for the bottom. To remove your clay from the tile, Put your blade down at a 45 degree angle and just kind of shimmy it. So you want to keep this sharp edge right on the tile. And I'm pressing down and just shimmying back and forth to neatly release it off the tile. You don't ever want to lift up and try to peel it because it will stretch and distort the clay. See, like that right there. <laughs> I just did. Sometimes this is Cernit brand uh, translucent and it is a little gooey so that's why that happened but it'll be fine. Now we can wrap this around the circle cutter. You can line up one of your cut edges with that rolled edge of the circle cutter. So you'll have a nice neat bottom. And look, it's stretched, so no worries about that little bit of shortage there. It's just fine. So because this is sticky, I am going to just trim that and then trim this. Sometimes this is so sticky, it sometimes won't release. Now gently smooth this seam just so that the pieces are adhered, but remember we can cover this with a tentacle. If you love clear, detailed instruction that helps you complete projects successfully, consider becoming a patron. Patrons get weekly behind-the-scenes sneak peeks into my creative process and a monthly bonus tutorial. Check out the link in the description box for all the details. I'm going to trim it flush with the top of the cutter. Tidy. If you have a cut edge like this, you can just take your finger and ever so lightly run over it. And it just browns it and gets rid of that cookie cutter look. And if you'd like to highlight the texture, you can use some mica powder. And the way to do this is to, I'm going to put just a little in the lid. You don't need much. Dip your finger in and then tap off the excess. If you don't tap off the excess, the excess will land down in the crevices. And we want it just on that raised texture area. So now that we've tapped off the excess, 
This is pretty subtle. I mean, you could definitely use something with more contrast. Just always dip and then tap. And I think I'll get this edge too, just to make it kind of neat. And you're going to bake this clay right on the form at the manufacturer's recommended time and temperature. Now, as a general rule, you don't want to bake at a higher temperature than the manufacturer recommends, but you can bake for longer. This will ensure that your clay is fully cured. The term baking polymer clay can be misleading. It's really not baking like you bake a pan of brownies, but it's more of curing as in a chemical process. And it needs to be at a certain temperature for at least a certain amount of time in order for it to cure. Another thing you probably want to do is use an oven thermometer because your home oven can be quite off. And again, it won't matter to that pan of brownies, but if it's not hot enough, it will matter to your polymer clay where it may end up crumbly because it didn't cure. Here's this piece still in its form out of the oven and cool. You can try peeling it off. Uh, you can even flex the form a little bit, but what I found works really well is to get something thin and hardened. This is a doll needle that will fit in there. Just kind of wiggle it down and then you can work your way around and just break that little bit of a suction there is from the clay sticking to the metal. And then you should be able to just gradually work it up off the cutter. You can see it sliding. Just keep working your way around until it comes off. Now gather up those leftover bits of clay and roll them out into a sheet. You can use a pasta machine or you can simply use an acrylic roller and just make them a little bit bigger than the cutter that you used. So here it is, a little bit bigger than the cutter. Don't use the cutter to cut this out because it will be too small because we have to account for the thickness of the walls. This just gives you a general idea. If you'd like to decorate the inside bottom of your tea light, an easy way to do this is to press on a stencil and then add some mica powders. You can see I did that here, but I think I'm gonna skip it with this one. This is kind of a pretty marbly blend. Add a little liquid clay to the bottom edge of your light. This is a brush I've just dedicated to liquid clay because it's, it's kind of useless for anything else at this point. Press this onto that sheet for the base. Use a craft knife to cut it out. Before I cut that out, I'm just going to add this to a piece of paper. That way I can move it around and not wreck anything. And you can bake right on this piece of paper. This will also help keep it uh, from getting shiny spots if you were to bake your clay right on a tile. The part that's touching the tile would have shiny spots. And you can kind of lift that up and smooth it out. I'm going to show you two different ways to add tentacles to your candle holder. The first one is fairly quick and easy. The second is more sculptural and a little more time consuming. Choose which one you are more comfortable with or make two tea lights and try them both. Since complementary colors look great together, I made these tentacles out of an orange clay, but I'm not entirely sure this color combination works. Here's a fun trick for finding the true complement of a color. Snap a photo of it, then import that photo into any photo editing software where you can convert the photo into a negative. In this case, you can see the negative of each of the first three colors I mixed. I chose this purple shade, which is my favorite of the three. I rolled it out on my pasta machine to just under two millimeters thick. You can use an acrylic roller. Then I added a silk screened design. Silk screening on polymer clay is super fun and easy. Because the clay is sticky, the silk screen sticks and doesn't let any excess paint seep underneath. You can kind of just burnish it down with a roller. There. 
Now you can simply use a brush, but I love using this squeegee as it doesn't leave excess paint. Just add a line of acrylic paint across one edge and make it fairly generous. We won't use all this paint. Take the cap off of your bottle. Then you can use your squeegee and it's a good habit to get into doing as few strokes as possible because the more you go back and forth the more chances there are of even though it's stuck to the clay the more chances there are of getting a, a double screening and then you can just scrape the excess paint into the bottle and you use hardly any paint this way and then peel off your silk screen for a really wonderful design. Wash the paint off of your silk screen right away. If it dries in there, your screen will be unusable. And be sure to allow the paint on your clay to dry completely before proceeding. This Jelly Wave Silk Screen by Create Along is perfect and what gave me the idea to make tentacles. But you can use any silk screen you have with a fluid design. Now use a craft knife to cut out eight long tapered wavy shapes. One of the reasons I like this silk screen is that it kind of already has those shapes in there, but you can not necessarily follow the shapes that are on the screen. I think that's is that going to be a little big. No, that'll be good. I have a trick for you for keeping those from flopping. And just carry on and cut out your tentacles. Here are the eight tentacles. Now lay a piece of deli paper over the shapes and very gently rub over the cut edges to slightly round them. This will take away that cookie cutter appearance. You don't have to press hard, just the pressure of your finger. Will give them a slightly more natural appearance. This deli paper, by the way, is one of my favorite tools to use with polymer clay. You've already seen me use it several different ways in this video. I will be sure to link it and all the supplies I used in this project in the description box below. This is one reason why you want to make sure that paint is completely dry if it isn't. If it wasn't, it would probably peel off with this paper. So I'm going to start with this biggest one. And because these shapes are quite a bit taller than my candle holder, I'm going to take a piece of cardstock and just roll it up and set it right in here. Don't press it down. Uh, I made that mistake with this one, forgetting that this clay on the bottom was still unbaked and I had to like peel bits of cardstock out of there. So just roll it up and then set it in there, let it unroll. This will just be a support for your tentacles. So add a little liquid clay to the back side, just to the height of your candle holder. That's a lot. I don't need that much. And this first one, this biggest one, I'm going to put right over that seam. And you can also reshape that. So I might give it a curl and I can kind of press it right on that cardstock and that will hold it in place. Repeat to add tentacles all around. I'm just finishing up adding my tentacles. A couple of tips for you. Make sure you cut each of them flush before you apply it as they often on the tile and with the rubbing they get kind of stretched out of shape. And then just push it down so that it's flush to the bottom of your container. To make sure everything is in place, you can take the back side of your blade, so not the sharp part, but just the back side, and kind of use this to make sure everything is right up against your tea light holder. Once that's all set, then you can bake that again at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for 45 minutes. For the more sculptural tentacles, roll your complementary color clay into eight tapered logs like these. 
For suckers, roll a whole bunch of little balls of clay. But here's a really cool trick. When you need tapering sizes of balls of clay, don't drive yourself crazy trying to roll them all in specific sizes. Instead, just roll them all, being sure your smallest is the smallest size you want and the largest is the largest size you want. I rolled 48, which is six for each of my eight legs. I've already done one here. You can see the tapered sizes, but let me show you how to do that. So I've used one, so seven. So what you do is you look at all of your little balls and you find the smallest. And then take another look, find the smallest. Keep doing that. And in this case, well, you would do eight, but I am doing seven because I already did one. Let's see, smallest. So you would pull out the eight smallest balls that you made. Um, that's good. That one's a little big, but that's okay. All right, seven. Keep going. What's the next smallest? And carry on. And when you're done, they will all be sorted in tapering order. Now rolling a perfect ball of clay it takes a little practice. It would seem like it would be easy, but it can be a little tricky. For, for tiny balls of clay, what you want to do is roll it around between your thumb and your index finger. You'll be able to feel, like if it starts to go oval, you can feel it. And what you can do is just kind of find where it's gone oval and squish it back down into a round. And then to finish it into a more of a round shape, just put it on your work surface and lightly, this is the key, if you press too hard, you're just going to end up with some weird shape that isn't round. So you just want to be barely touching it and make little circles. And again, if it goes off, just kind of press down the wider part and make it more even. And it, it just comes with practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Don't overthink this. It's not crucial. <laughs> it's just, it looks kind of nice, I think, to have them a little bit smaller at the tip and a little bit wider at the base. Oh, and hey, looky there. I actually counted right. <laughs> okay. And now we can add these to your tentacles. You can shape and curl these just like the flat ones, but it's easiest to do this to after you add the tentacles. So starting with the smallest ball near the tip, place that on, and then gently, gently press it with a 1 8 inch ball tool. Don't press too hard or you'll flatten the back side of your tentacle. Just press enough to indent the sucker and adhere it to your tapered log. And if you need to, you might have to re-roll those a little, make them round again. That's okay. This is probably the most time-consuming part, but I think it looks super cool. I don't know why. I'm not particularly fond of octopi, but I do kind of like this look. And carry on to make your eight tentacles. And now you can gently twist or bend. I like when I have this to kind of bend it like that so some of the suckers show on that side. So here's what I made with that leftover clay you saw me trim off earlier. Just another little dish, a little smaller and a little thinner, but it still works fine. And because it's shorter, I think these tentacles, that might be a little tall. So I think I want to trim it. Now you can trim the base with a clay blade or a craft knife. And you can either trim it flush so that the trim part sits against the uh, surface, or you can trim it at a diagonal, which is kind of fun. And then it looks like it's coming out of your piece. So I think I'm going to put one, a different one at that seam. So as before, we'll add some liquid clay. And I'll put this over here. Kind of press that in. 
Now, you can get all creative and crazy with these, but if you want to fit a tea light in there, you don't want these to be in the way. So carry on and add your tentacles. Let's see this one. I'm going to make flush so I can put it right up against that seam. And if these look like they're going to flop over, you can also use the cardstock trick. Although you won't be able to put pieces on the inside, which I think is kind of fun. So do whatever works for you. Oh, I didn't need liquid clay on the bottom. Whoops. I need liquid clay where it's going to touch. There. <laughs> there. Oh, that's fun. Add all of your tentacles. Bake again at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for an hour. This one needs slightly longer baking because the rounded tentacles are thicker than the flat pieces. Primo Sculpey says to bake for 30 minutes per quarter inch of thickness. So if something like these is a half inch thick, then it needs at least an hour to be fully cured. To see your colors glow and dance, add a light, but for safety reasons, make it a battery operated light as a real flame can scorch polymer clay. Now you know these techniques, but you need to go even deeper by diving into the polymer clay basics playlist I put together for you. See you in the next video.